Hello. Uh, welcome back to our uh, uh, sessions on uh, transmission and uh, distribution. So this is Professor Uma Rao. Um, I'm a professor in the Department of Electrical and Electronics Engineering at uh, RV College of Engineering, Bengaluru. So I bring to you the lecture sessions on transmission and distribution under the e Sakshana program of BTO. So in my last session, uh, we saw about SAG. So SAG is, you know, the bend which occurs in a transmission line. And uh, this is necessary because if I make the tension too tight between the supports, then there is all likelihood that the line would snap. Okay. So we saw that SAG is uh, necessary. So if you have a high tension, you have a low SAG. And if you have a low tension, you have a high SAG. So we have to make a compromise. <clears throat> and this SAG is going to determine what is the minimum clearance we have or require from the ground. Because I must account for that distance. And we saw the expression for SAG when I have the two supports at the same height. So in this session, uh, we will see about SAG calculations when the supports are at different levels. <clears throat> this could be common because I might have an uneven line. I might have an uneven line or uh, let us say I have a river. I have a river and the land around it is hilly. So I may have a pole at one of the lower hills and another pole at a higher uh, location and I might run a line between these two. Very common, we would have seen all that. So in hilly locations, it's very common to have support at two different levels. It's only when you have a flat land, you can have supports at the same levels. So now we will see how the SAC can be calculated when I have the support at different levels. So I want you all to pay attention to this uh, figure, right? So A1, A1 is one support. A2 is another support. So A1 is at a lower height and it's a height of H1 from the reference. This could be a ground, it could be a water body, whatever, it's a flat reference. And A2 is at a height H2 from the reference. Clear? So we start with a support at A1 at a height H1 and a support at A2 at a height H2. So now the difference in the height is H. That is H2 minus H1. That is the height difference between the two supports. Now let O, O be the point of you know, maximum sag. That means the lowest point, lowest point in the bend. Let me call that as O. Clear? So I have A, A1, I have A2, and I have a conductor in between. So the conductor sags. So the lowest sag point I de designated as O. Let the vertical distance, the vertical distance between O and the lower support be S1. Clear? And the vertical distance between O and the higher support be S2. So the point O is at a distance of S1 from A1 and at a distance of S2 from A2. So the difference between the two will give you the total sag. The distance difference between the two will give you the total sag. Clear? Fine. Now, this point O, I assume it to be at a distance of A1 from uh, the support A1 and at a distance of A2 from the support A2. So the total span, that is a horizontal distance between the two supports L is equal to A1 plus A2, clear? So A1 and A2, it divides the conductor into two sections. One is section A1O and other is section A2O. I have the two sections. So I have two arcs, two arcs here divided. 
So S1 is the sag in the first arc and S2 is the sag in the second arc, second section. So I think now we are clear about the uh, nomenclature. And now let us see how we proceed with the derivation. I have already, we have already derived in the previous session that the sag Y is equal to Wx squared by 2t. So let us recollect what are the terms here. So Y is the vertical sag from the support. W is the weight of the conductor per meter. T is the tension. And this tension acts always tangentially. And X is the horizontal distance from the point of lowest sag. From the point of lowest sag. Clear? So this X, Y are coordinates at of some arbitrary point P, which is at a vertical distance Y and at a horizontal distance X from O. O is the least height, that is the maximum sag you have at O, which I have taken as the origin. So this derivation we have done in the previous session, that is in session four. So if you have forgotten, you can go back and view that recording again. Now, I have two sections, right? So in the first section, S1 is the vertical distance and A1 is the horizontal distance. Okay, so I simply substitute for y and x. So I get S1 is equal to WA1 squared by 2t and S2 is equal to WA2 squared by 2t. So I now have the sags in the two sections. Now, we know that the total sag S is the difference between the two. So S is equal to S2 minus S1 and uh, substituting for S2 and S1, I get W by 2T into A2 squared minus A1 squared. And A2 squared minus A1 squared, I write it as A2 plus A1 into A2 minus A1. No big, big rocket science here, just I simply split it. Now, what is A1 plus A2? We know that is equal to the length of the span L. That is the horizontal distance between the two supports, A1 and A2. So let me substitute for A2 plus AL here in this equation. I will get S is equal to. So by substituting for A2 plus A1, I get W by 2T into A2 plus A1 is L into A2 minus A1. So basically, I have to solve for A2 and A1 here. If I solve for A2 and A1, I can get the sags S1 and S2. And then using them, I can find the total sag S. So I need two equations in A2 and A1 to solve. Right. I already have one equation. One equation is A1 plus A2 is equal to L. And this is the second equation. S is equal to WL by 2T into A2 minus A1. So from this, I write A2 minus A1 is equal to, you see this 2T, I take it to the left-hand side, is equal to 2TS by WL. And I have an equation already. So you see, now I have two equations in two unknowns, A1 and A2. So I solve for A1 and A2 using these two equations. And I get a simple solution. A1 is equal to L by 2 minus Ts by WL. And A2 is equal to L by 2 plus Ts by WL. Now you see, in the previous lecture, when we saw the supports at the same level, the sag will occur at the midpoint. The sag will occur at the midpoint, exactly at L by 2. But here what I have, I have sags, I have the supports at two different levels and I have a conductor here. So the, mid, the minimum point can occur anywhere, depending on what is the length of the span L. So you see, what does it depend on? It depends on L, it depends on T, it depends on S, S is the sag, 
and W. So S depends on so many parameters. So how do I go about it? So I know A1 plus, I know A1, I know A2. So using A1 and A2, I can find out S1 and S2, and then I can find the SAC. So what are all the possibilities I end up with in this solution? So the first one is, you just see where is A1? A1 is the distance from the lowest lower support. The horizontal distance from the lower support here and the point of maximum sac. Now, if A1 is greater than zero, if A1 is greater than zero, that means I have my support here. So I am right to the right of the support in this diagram. With respect to this diagram, if A1 is positive means my lowest point is to the right of the support A1. But A1 can also be negative because it depends on the tension and the length of the span. So A1 can also be negative. What is the meaning of A1 being negative? A1 negative means it lies to the left of the support A1. That means it lies outside the span. It's possible. The lowest point doesn't occur, but if it occurs, it will be, it's like an extrapolation. I'm doing an extrapolation. Are you getting it? If the lower lowest point is between the two supports, you achieve the lowest point. But if it is outside the support means what? You have still not got the least point. So it, the lowest point is outside the supports. Because you, this is a bend. This is just like a parabola. You get a bend. So the lower, lowest point can occur anywhere. Now, if it is zero, if A1 is zero means what? A1 is zero means your lowest point occurs at the support, lower support. So unlike in supports at the same level, unlike in supports at the same level, here I can have three different scenarios. So you see, I, we saw this derivation. So if A1 is greater than zero, the lowest point lies between the supports. If A1 is less than zero, the lowest point lies outside the support. So you don't see it. It will occur somewhere outside if you extend the parabola. If you extend the curve, it will occur outside. It's not a parabola exactly. Okay. So if you extend that curve, it will lie outside. And if A1 is equal to zero, means the lowest point lies at the lower support point. So I have three different cases. Okay. So now let us solve some problems and uh, that will uh, make things clear. So let us take this example. The weight of the conductor is uh, 0.25 kgs per meter. And the span length is 180 meters. And the maximum strength is 2000 kg. And the factor of safety is four. So there are two things you have to remember, which I had mentioned in my previous session. One is both W and the strength. Make sure they're in the same units. Either both are in, you know, W is in Newton per meter, then maximum strength can be in Newtons. If that is in kg per meter, this also has to be in kgs. This is one point you have to remember. And the factor of safety, two, minimum you have to take two. Okay. So the more you take, more expensive it may become. So one support is at 80 meters from the reference. And the second support is at 60 meters. Determine the minimum clearance from ground. So I must have some minimum clearance from ground. And the minimum point of the catenary. I told you this curve it takes is called as a catenary. We will determine these two. I have all the data. You only have to apply the suitable formula. So T is equal to the ultimate strength by 4 by factor of safety. So it is 500 kg. In this case, S is the difference in the levels. 
So difference in the levels is uh, uh, 20 meters. And A1, A1 is equal to L by 2 minus T by S by WL. So that you know that S, you can even calculate from H1 and H2, or you can get from S1 and S2, either way. Both will be the same because both have the same references. So I calculate A1. A1 is L by 2 minus T S by W L. The span is 180 meters. Tension is 500. S is 20. Then W is 0.25. And again, L is 180. So I get minus 132.22 meters. What does this mean? This means that the lowest point of the catenary, that is the curve, lies outside the support. That means your conductor actually doesn't reach the lowest point at all. So the lowest point of the catenary lies outside the support. So what is the minimum clearance you require? So you see, what, I, what, what am I doing? I have two supports like this. And now my lowest point is somewhere here below this. I am not, my conductor will never reach that point. So the minimum clearance I require is the lower support height. That's all. Clear. See, if, if the minimum point occurs somewhere in between, now this will be the minimum clearance. Supposing it occurs in between, this will be the minimum clearance. But it lies outside. So my conductor will never reach the minimum point. Therefore, what is the minimum clearance I require? Whatever is the height of the lower support, I need that much. The rest of the conductor will lie above that only because the minimum occurs somewhere below that, outside. So here, in this case, the minimum clearance is 60 meters. That is the height of the lower tower. Got it? Now we will take one more example. I've taken the same data, same data, except that you know, we had the supports at 80 and 60. Now I take it at 80 and 75. Now we will see what happens. So T, W all are same. Now S is 5 meters. 80 minus 75, 5 meters. So I get A1 is equal to 34.44 meters. Positive. So if this is your lower support and this is your upper support, the minimum point is in between. It is in between. So it is at a distance of 34.44 meters from the lower support. Okay. So the lowest point lies inside the span. And now that is no longer true. Minimum ground clearance is equal to lower support level. Is this correct? No. This is in the previous case where it lies outside. This is not true. Okay. So let, let us mark it out. This is not correct. Okay. I have just included it to highlight. This is not correct. So where should the minimum point lie? I will find out what is S1. That is how much of sag is there from the lower support. So A1 is 34.44 squared. So I have 2T, so 2 into 500. So S1 is 0 0.296 meters. Clear? So what does this mean? From your lower support, which is at 75 meters, there is a sag of 0.296 meters. So your conductor will come down here. So this horizontal distance is A1, that is 34.44. And the vertical distance, obviously this is at 75 and with respect to this, this is at 0.296. So the vertical distance is 74.7 meters. And that is the minimum clearance required. Okay, that's how you calculate. Now let us take uh, one more example. A transmission line conductor is at a river crossing. So around the ri ri river, the land is not uniform. So I have two towers at a height of 50 meters and 80 meters above the water level. So water level is the reference. So one is at 50 and one is at 80. And the span is 300 meters. 
the tension in the conductor is 2000 kg so find the clearance between the conductor and water at a point midway between the towers i want the clearance at midway between the towers and weight of the conductor is 0.844 kg assume that the conductor takes the shape of the parabola this is just a sort of all our equations are done with that assumption simple so we'll see what what is different here so the difference in the water levels is 30 meters that is the sac support distance now a1 is uh, we have the formula l by 2 minus ts by wl i get minus 87 meters and a2 a2 is l2 by l2 l by 2 plus ts by wl so i get 387 meters obviously because a2 is the distance of the higher tower from the lowest point okay so the lowest point is 87 meters to the left and this is 300 meters to the right so that distance is 387 meters so since i am getting a1 is negative that means the lowest point will not occur the conductor will not face the lowest point so the minimum clearance obviously in this case is what the height of the lower support or the lower tower so see this is what i get this is what i put so i've just made it colorful so that you will know so a2 is at 80 meters and uh, a1 is at 50 meters so this distance is uh, 30 right and i have the lowest point i'm extending it here see here the lowest point i'm extending it here this is at 87 outside 87 outside and this span length is 300 meters 300 meters okay so i know a1 i know a2 everything so now what do they want us to calculate the first one, first one, uh, question was find the lowest point. So the lowest point is at 87 meters away from the lower end, outside. And then what is the sag at point midway? At point midway. So this is at midway, let us say is, is B. Okay, point B is midway. And what is the sag experienced at that point? Okay. So I just want you to just uh, look at this figure and we will, uh, we will come back to that. So what I do is I calculate S1. S1 will be, the, will be the sag of the lower support with respect to the minimum point. So this distance, this will be S1. And I calculate S2. S2 will be the sag, okay, will be the sag at the upper support with respect to the lowest point, right? I, I, I calculate uh, that. And I calculate what will be the height of this point B with respect to O. Uh, are you understanding what all I'm going to calculate? So I know this total height, this red vertical line you see at A2. I know this to be 80 meters. I know this to be 80 meters. And I know the height of O, I calculate what is this and I calculate the height of B with respect to O, which I'll call it as YB, which I'll call as YB. Clear? So with this, I will try to find out the height. So 80 minus this S2 will give me this height. With S2, remember, is with respect to O, the height of A2 with respect to O. S1 is the height of A1 with respect to O. Right. So 80 minus S2 will give me the height of O above the ground. Then I will get the height of B above O and then add it. I will get the height of B above the water level. That's what is asked. At the midpoint, what is it? So let us do it. So I, get, I calculate S1, WA1 squared by 2T, 1.59. So this is the vertical distance 
between the lowest point and the lower support. And S2 is um, W, sorry, it is not A1 square, it is A2 square. Um, that I get as 31.6 meters. So this is the height of the higher tower with respect to the water body. Sorry, not water body. It is the height of the upper tower with respect to the minimum point O. Clear? So I know the two heights. So let us go back to the diagram here. I found, found out S2. S2 is the height of A2 with respect to O. S1 is the height of A1 with respect to O. Let O be the origin and B, point B be located midway. That's what I told you between the towers A1 and A2. Let the coordinates of B be XB and YB. That is with respect to origin O. Now see here, B is at midpoint between these two, right? So this distance is 300 meters, the horizontal distance between A1 and A2 supports. So the midpoint will be 150 meters. And you know this point is at a horizontal distance of 87 with respect to O. Therefore, XB, XB will be 237, 150 plus 87. Got it? Simple. Yeah. So XB is A1 plus L by 2. That is 237. Then I have the general formula to find the vertical sag at any point. That is WX squared by 2. Okay. So YB will be WXB squared by 2. t. I get 11.85 meters. So again, let's see with respect to the figure. You just see here where I am. A2 is at 80 meters above the water, okay? And A2 is at 31.6 meters above O, okay? So O is 80 minus 31.6 meters above the water level. So this level, water level and O, this will be 80 minus 31.6. And B, is at a vertical distance YB, which I have found out to be 11.85 above O. And therefore, the height of B above the water body is 80 minus 31.6 plus 11.85. So all of you, please take a pen, paper, draw this diagram yourself. Everything will be very clear. No big calculations. You just have to do a little bit of bookkeeping and uh, do the calculations correct. So this is the clearance I get, 60.26 meters. Okay. Now let's do another uh, uh, similar problem. The towers of height 30 meters and 90 meters support a transmission line and the uh, span is 500 meters, tension is 1600 and the weight of the conductor is 1.5 kg per meter. So find again the minimum clearance of the conductor and water and the clearance midway between the supports, just like the previous problem. Same, exactly like the previous problem. So now let's see what I get. The values are different. Okay, so I get A1 is 122. So it's positive. That means it lies to the right of the lower support. That means the point of minimum catenary point lies in between the supports. If it is negative, means the minimum catenary point lies outside the support. So I get A2, A2 is 378 uh, meters. I calculate S1, 6.97 meters. So the minimum point is here down, 6.97 meters. So the minimum clearance I require from the water body is 30 minus 6.97, that is 23.03 meters. And in the same way, I calculate XB, but now the point is, to the right. So I have L by 2 and this is A1. So I have L by 2 minus A1. There it was plus A1 because it, the point of minimum catenary, it lay to the left. And I calculate YB is 7.68 meters. So point B is 7.68 meters above O. That is the minimum point. And O itself is 23.03 above water. 
Therefore, point B is 23.03 plus 7.68, 30.71 meters above the water level. Clear? So you see, this is the figure. It's not very, it's just illustrative. So this is 90, this is 30, okay? And this is A1, 122, this is 378. And this is point B, the midpoint of the span. So B will be at, you know, L by two minus A1 and all the other data is on this figure. So what did we see here? We saw how you can calculate the sag when the supports are at different levels. And here you get three different conditions, unlike when the supports are uh, at equal heights. So one possibility is the lowest point of the catenary lies outside the span. So the conductor never reaches the lowest point. The second possibility is the lowest point lies in between the two supports. Then the conductor will experience the lowest point. And the third possibility is the lowest point lies at the lower support itself. And we saw how you can solve for uh, you know, the sag at any point near the conductor. Thank you.